Hello and welcome back to my humble show. I am your host for today and every other day, the Articulate Thinker. Hopefully, here to bring you art articles and articulation straight from articulation stations. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enjoy the ride. Don't forget to turn on those bell notifications while you're at it. If you like it, put a ring on it. Speaking of rings, this is not my usual ring. Might have mentioned this already, but I was out skateboarding a couple of weeks ago, fell, and slapped the ground so hard that my ring shattered. I had a backup, but it was a larger size, so I had to switch from my ring finger to my middle finger. Speaking of middle fingers, well, uh, Lauren Boebert has been in the news, and if you're interested in political drama, well, she is a drama mama, so... This will be fun to talk about. Not really, but I'm going to talk about it because people have been talking about it. And I talk about the things that people are talking about. Feel free to disagree with me on anything I may say. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what you know. It's not like I'm an expert on anything, especially when it comes to drama. But I have some thoughts to share with you. So, yeah, my reaction. Behold, my reaction. My opinion. It's just my opinion. I mean, we all have one, don't we? So yeah, I'd be happy to hear yours because a lot of Republicans are defending her, but at the same time, a lot aren't. I'm not sure how exactly it stacks up, the two sides of that issue. I, I would say overall, more people are going to be critical of her since there are all of the Democrats against her. And then there are some of the Republicans against her. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure how many people are defending her at this point. You might be wondering what I'm talking about. Well, let me walk you through it. I'll start with this. I have a lot of things pull up in front of me. I'm going to show you all of them if I, if I can. So help me goodness. Here is something that Lauren Boebert... Representative Lauren Bubbert posted to X on the 12th of September. It's true, I did thoroughly enjoy the amazing Beetlejuice at the Buell Theater. And I played guilty to laughing and singing out loud, she said. Let me enlarge the text just a little bit. If I can. It's not wanting to enlarge. I've switched up my browser here from... Ugh. Firefox to uh, Edge. Seeing if this one runs a little more smoothly than the aforementioned Firefox. Alright, so everyone should go see it if you get the chance this week. And please let me know how it ends, Lauren Bubbert said. Well, she wasn't exactly describing the situation accurately. And you'll see what I mean. And then you'll see what I mean about me saying that you'll see what I mean. Let me switch up my, my camera. The other one is a little bit too bright on my face. Can you see that? Look like a knight in shining armor over here. There we go. It's just the time of the day. Yeah. Messes with my lighting. Alright, so yeah. Like I said, she posted that on the 12th. And then she got exposed. Here's an article from the New York Times. Bobert apologizes for vaping in a Denver theater. But there's more to it than that. Believe me. Believe you me. The Colorado Congresswoman previously denied vaping during the performance, but could be seen doing so on surveillance. There's a clip here. Oh, she's dancing. She's having a good time. People are telling her to simmer down a little tea kettle. But she wasn't having any of it. And then ultimately the theater wasn't having any of her. They kicked her out. So Representative Lauren Bubbert of Colorado was kicked out of a performance of the musical Beetlejuice in Denver after causing a disturbance. All right, all right, all right. Might be hard to tell what's going on in these clips. But I'll break it down more thoroughly as time goes by. As for this article, I'll speed read it. 
Representative Lauren Boebert, a hard-right Republican rabble-rouser from Colorado, apologized on Friday night for her behavior at a recent performance of the family-friendly, keywords there, musical Beetlejuice in Denver after surveillance video revealed her vaping and behaving disruptively in the theater. Ms. Boebert, 36 years of age, previously denied reports that she had been vaping. A pregnant woman seated behind her asked her to stop before she was ejected for causing a disturbance at the show, according to the Denver Post. It is possible that the woman behind her had no idea who she was. It's also possible that she knew her, or knew of her, and didn't like her. Some people might spin that narrative. I'm not going to spin any narrative. At least I I hope not. I'm just going to call it like I see it, and I'm going to keep that same energy because I have criticized plenty of Democrats. In fact, I did that in my previous show. So, yeah, keeping that same energy here, and I'm going to going to call out Bobert. The past few days have been difficult and humbling, she said. Bobert, that is. And you know what? Because the statement is in other articles which I have pulled up, I might skip the quoted portions. But I'll add here. Miss Bobert, who can be seen on the video touching and carrying on with her date while sitting in the middle of a crowded theater, blamed what she called her public and difficult divorce for her behavior and said, I simply fell short of my values on Sunday. Okay. So that seems to imply that she is currently going through a divorce. I'm not certain of that. I'm not certain whether or not she is fully divorced or whether she is in the process of a divorce. Some people are going to have an issue with her being on a date and fooling around with this other man if she is still technically married. Just putting that out there. I personally take issue with that as well. But I'm just saying, I don't know. I haven't really looked into the state of her divert, divorce. Her divorce. But yeah, she says, public and difficult divorce. That's what she chalks it up to. So not my words, but hers. Miss Bobert, a mother of four boys who likes to show off pictures of her new grandchild and colleagues in Congress, said she genuinely did not recall vaping that evening. It's not like she was doing hard drugs. At least I don't think. How could she not remember? Some people are so anxious that they can't exactly remember when they're habitually doing something. But if you're doing something habitually, that would imply that you do it all the time. And if you do it all the time, then you should already know that you most likely did it and not deny it. But again, I don't think she was very anxious in that situation. If anything, she wasn't anxious enough. She was just acting up. But anyways, might be thinking too much about this. Like I said, I have some thoughts. Hey. <laughs> Genuinely did not recall vaping that evening when she told her campaign to issue a statement denying she had done so. She said she would have to work hard to earn back trust from voters in her district. So, essentially, she made a statement denying that she had been vaping. And then the video was presented of her vaping. And that narrative went up in smoke. So she spoke too soon on that one. But that's only the half of it. Since she was fooling around in public. In front of kids. It may be a heavy lift for Miss Bobert, who won re-election in 2022 by just 546 votes. If her too-close-for-comfort re-election campaign was a message that Colorado voters didn't like her brand of disruptive politics, she hasn't appeared to have received it. Since January, she has often acted in ways many Republicans view as detrimental to keeping control of the House in 2024 and to her keeping her seat. And, hey, as far as I'm concerned, she doesn't deserve her seat. I'm not a big fan of her in the first place, so no sweat off my brow when I call her out on this. But yes, in June, Ms. Bubbert tried to force a vote on articles of impeachment against President Biden, claiming his immigration policies constituted high crimes and misdemeanors. Some of her colleagues called the move crazy, and it was eventually shunted off to committees for further 
study. Marjorie Taylor Greene and her had words over this, exchanging the opposite of pleasantries because they were stealing each other's ideas or something like that. Uh, yeah. And that's another Congress member, Congresswoman I'm not a fan of, MTG. But she hasn't gone this far quite yet. Quite yet. Give it time. Miss Bubbert distinguished herself during the fraught speaker's race in January as one of the most committed holdouts against Representative Kevin McCarthy of California, milking a... Interesting choice of words. The moment for maximum Fox News exposure. In the House, she has cultivated an abrasive public persona, sometimes heckling her Democratic colleagues in the halls of the Capitol and largely ignoring reporters' questions, except to loudly proclaim at times, I love President Trump! Who says that? If you say that, I have questions about you. If you say that you hate him, I also have questions about you. Just be reasonable. That's all I ask. Is that too much to ask? The behavior has also earned a cult following on the right. Miss Bobert, who often wears 5-inch lucite, L-U-C-I-T-E. I don't know my heels. Sorry. Uh, in a skin-tight dress. Has a national base of fans who enjoy her disruptive antics and extreme rhetoric. Yeah, I think the people on the left enjoy it especially. Because she gives them every reason they need to keep hurling insults at people like me. Because she supposedly represents me. I mean, not directly, since I'm not in her state. But, yeah. I think I've made it clear how I feel already. On the House floor, Miss Bubbert has railed against drag performances for children and claimed the left was grooming children by exposing them to obscene content. Now, I'm not going to conclude that she didn't mean any of what she said about these other immoral issues. But she is a massive hypocrite either way. Here's another article from the New York Post. Lauren Bubbert groped Beetlejuice State in heavy petting session before getting tossed out. Blames behavior on divorce. I had a few thoughts on her, her date. I almost called her a whore. But then again, would that be much of a stretch? <laughs> yeah, I had some thoughts on her date. Date. I don't know if I have them pulled up in another tab. I'll see if I run into them. If not, I'll put this on pause and find them. Anyways. Got tossed out. Blame behavior on divorce. Let me speed read this one as well. See if there's anything I missed. Wild woman. <laughs> you think? Representative Lauren Bobert squeezed in a quick groping session between vaping and loudly singing during her already infamous Beetlejuice viewing, later blaming her inappropriate behavior on her ongoing divorce. Security footage from Denver's Buell Theater uh, Sunday shows the 36-year-old uh, Colorado Republican reaching down for her date's crotch shortly after blowing a plume of vaporized smoke into the air, which she initially denied doing. So, is she lying, or is she incompetent? It seems to me that she would be one of the first to call out someone like Joe Biden when he gaffs, when he claims something happened or didn't happen, and the opposite is true. You know, it doesn't really matter to people on the right, including me, whether he is lying or incompetent. I mean, either way, it's bad. So what about in her case? Was she lying or was she incompetent? Yeah, not very presentable of a person, if you ask me. In any case, in either case. When her date, Democratic Aspen bar owner Quinn Gallagher, 46 years of age, in turn appeared to fondle her breast, the congresswoman aggressively grabbed his hand to keep it there. So she didn't want to push it away. She wanted to keep it there. Family friendly, right? Part of the problem here. The heavy petting was just one immature action in the series by Bobert, which led theater staff to boot the pair out before the end of the show. Multiple audience members complained that the firebrand was smoking, obstructing their view by raising her hands, taking pictures, 
with the flash on and loudly singing. And yes, because the video has been revealed, it can't be denied any longer. The lawmaker flipped the ushers off before finally leaving, and that's where the middle finger comes into play. And no, I'm not going to flip you off to show you what I mean, but I will show you my ring again. If you like it, put a ring on it. Turn on those bell notifications. All right, so she flipped the ushers off before finally leaving the venue, but not before warning them she would report them over the incident. So you have to be extremely entitled to act up in such a way and then claim that you're going to report the people who put you in your place. I know you're a congresswoman. You know some people who know some people who know some people. But, hey. You don't know all that much, ultimately. Maybe you, maybe you need to make some new friends. Maybe you know the wrong people. Or maybe they know the wrong person. Gotta watch out for people like that. They'll get you in trouble. So, yeah. Scrolling through some screenshots here. There was a video. I'll play some of it. You see a kid right here walking past him. I believe this was at the beginning of the show. Or during a break of some sort. Right here is where her and her man, her boy, were sitting when they were ushered off by some sort of security. But yeah, that's that's neither here nor there because I have a video that I can play. Let me finish off this article, though. Do you know who I am? She was quoted as saying. Just like the, the immature villain of any movie. Do you know who I am? In a statement Friday, Bubber apologized for her uncouth behavior, chalking it up to her recent split from Jason, her husband of 18 years. The mother of four and grandmother of one filed for divorce in May, citing inconcilable differences. Wait, she's a grandmother? Wait. She's a grandmother at 36 years of age? Okay. Well, she was married for 18 years. She recently split from her husband of 18 years. But again, I don't know if they are entirely split. Split, or if they are in the process of splitting still. Splitting hairs either way. Another screenshot. Another screenshot. Pervert, you're having fun with that one. There's no perfect blueprint for going through a public and difficult divorce, which over the past few months has made for a challenging personal time for me and my entire family. Okay, it looked like you were having a grand time. Too grand of a time. And again, I have the statement, the apology, pulled up elsewhere, so I'll skip past the rest of that quote. Bobert also admitted to smoking from an electronic device inside the theater, walking back on initial claims by her campaign team that her audience, or that, yeah, other audience members, which became her audience, who became her audience, uh, not by a choice of their own. <coughs> <coughs> Other audience members mistook heavy fog machines for vape pen smoke. Okay, it would be one thing to just deny having vaped, but if you make up some ridiculous excuse like, oh, heavy fog machines did the smoking when it was literally her, that just makes it seem even more like a lie. I looked for I looked for those initial claims by her campaign team and by the, the most recent apology by her. I figured it was a press release. I couldn't find it on her personal representative website i i couldn't find it on any of her social media accounts so i don't know if it has been taken down or or if she just reported like in an interview of some sort to a, a news company but yeah i can't i can't find the original or not the original but the actual apology letter or however she penned it i i just see it in every article so it's obviously legit. She she talked to someone about it. She apologized to someone. In other words, 
But yeah, a pregnant woman sitting behind the rowdy duo said that she asked Bubbert to stop smoking promptly the pole. Uh, to call her a sad and miserable person. Prompting the pole. P-O-L. Wait, what? Prompting the pole to call her a sad and miserable person. Person of... What does P-O-L stand for? A pregnant woman sitting behind the rowdy duo said that she asked Bubbert to stop smoking, prompting the P-O-L to call her a sad and miserable person. What does P-O-L stand for? Let me know in the comments below. I want to know. I know everything except that. I'm just kidding. There's so many things I don't know. Whether it was the excitement of seeing a much-anticipated production or the natural anxiety of being in a new environment, I genuinely did not recall vaping that evening when I discussed, oh, blah, 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 spare me. You could have left that out of your apology. Here's the thing. If you're going to apologize, just apologize. Some people on the right are going to say, don't apologize. Don't ever apologize. You know, when someone who is not quite enough of a leftist apologize for not being quite enough of a leftist people on the right say don't apologize to them it's not like they're going to forgive you they're going to eat you alive and you're just revealing how weak you are well i'm not saying that a logic applies here i'm not saying that she shouldn't have apologized i'm just saying if you're going to apologize just apologize don't try to mix in a bunch of excuses with it and and try to cover up for your previous lies or incompetence it would be a rematch of the 2022 election in which she narrowly defeated the Colorado businessman by uh, 546 votes or 0. 0.16 of the 327,000 total ballots cast. And that's in regards to the third term in Congress, which she is seeking. In which she will be facing Democrat challenger Adam Frisk. Interesting name, considering she was the one who was being frisked in this case. Also, being frisky. She was being frisky. But mostly just risky. More risky than frisky. Well, sometimes being frisky is being risky. Alright, so here's an article from Blaze Media. Last one was the New York Post, if I didn't mention it already. Lauren Bobert issues apology after video appears to show her vaping being fondled by date during Beetlejuice musical. Not your typical theater. Theater. You know what? I could probably skip this article. In fact, it looks like I I should. Bubber announced that she was filing for diver divorce. I keep saying diverse instead of divorce. Divorce from her husband of 18 years, Jason Bobert, in May. The Republican representative cited irreconcilable differences as the reason for the divorce. Sorry, I didn't enlarge the text before I started reading. But I'm going to skip on to the next tab anyway. See what else I have. Here's a more extensive article. This from, from 9 News. This one from 9 News. I apparently have an ad blocker turned on. I didn't think I did. I, I thought I had it turned off. Let's see. Let's see if this works. It's not working. I don't even know if I'm clicking on the right setting. Give me a second. All right. I figured it out. That was easier than I was making it out to be. Yeah, I had to take my sweater off. It's getting a little warm in here. Okay, so if you're tired of listening to me, I'll give you someone else to listen to. This is a news clip from, uh, like I said, 9 News. Here you go. Does it matter that Congresswoman Lauren Boebert got kicked out of a musical? Don't know how many voters based their decisions on theater etiquette. But it also appears that the Republican Congresswoman and her team were not honest about what happened. They denied that she was thrown out of the theater for vaping, being disruptive, and arguing with other patrons. Bobert says she was escorted out just for laughing and singing too loud. As they used to say, let's go to the videotape. 
Bobert, Bobert, Bobert. Say it three times and she appears in security video from a weekend performance of Beetlejuice where the congresswoman was kicked out of the theater for being disruptive. The DCPA says she was vaping. Bobert's team denied that, said the haze was from fog machines in the show. That claim goes up in smoke when you see the video. The pregnant huh. woman sitting behind Bobert told Puns. the Denver Post she asked her to stop vaping, and Bobert refused. Her one-woman show continued, taking flash photos, raising her hands and dancing, often the only one clapping or standing up in the crowd. Bobert occasionally took a break from being disruptive to enjoy the company of her male companion. He briefly had a grasp on the situation before ushers returned Oof. and told Bobert she had to leave. The theater's instant report says Bobert pulled the Don't You Know Who I Am card on the way out, giving theater employees the single finger salute. Yeah. As you can see, she had to fix her situation there. Ignore this. Don't know what this is. My cat distracted me, trying to get up in my lap. Sorry about that. New video obtained by 9 News supports claims that Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert was vaping as she sat inside the Buell Theater for a weekend performance of Beetlejuice. Extra juicy. Yeah, the extra juicy edition. I don't know if you could catch all of those uh, clips in the in the video I just played. But, um, yeah. Various cuts from her performance. Quite a performance it was. The incident report from the Buell Theater detailed several patron complaints about the behavior of the two people sitting in row E near the front of the theater. The incident report does not name Bobert, but two city sources confirmed with Nine News that Bobert was escorted from the performance over complaints of vaping, taking pictures, and causing a disturbance. You could see all of that. And then it has her statement here, but it is at the bottom. So I'll scroll on down. Report details the effort by ushers and supervisors to address the complaints. According to the report, there were three different complaints about the two people vaping, singing, and causing a disturbance. Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, this is getting repetitious. Let's see if I can speed things up a bit. And I already showed you this, so no need to break that down again. Clearly was not an accurate depiction of her time spent performing at the performance. But Bobert released the following statement through her campaign team Friday. And this is what I couldn't find the actual source of. I don't know if her campaign reached out to Nine News or someone else. I'm not sure. I just can't find it on any of her official campaign platforms or anything like that. So now, for the actual statement. The past few days have been difficult and humbling, and I'm truly sorry for the unwanted attention my Sunday evening in Denver has brought to the community. Uh, she does say sorry, but she starts by talking about how difficult things have been for her. That's my first point. Unwanted attention my Sunday evening in Denver has brought to the community. While none of my actions or words as a private citizen that night were intended to be malicious or meant to cause harm, the reality is that they did, and I regret that. Maybe you regret getting caught and becoming viral for the wrong reason. Though half the time when she goes viral, it's because people are taking issue with what she's saying or doing. So I'm not... I'm not sure when it's too much, like when she crosses the line, but obviously this is across the line, so there's that. There's no perfect blueprint for going through a public and difficult divorce, which over the past few months has made for a challenging personal time for me and my entire family. I've tried to handle it with strength and grace as best I can, but I simply fell short on my values on Sunday. That's unacceptable, and I'm sorry. I don't want to say that she's entirely excusing it. Obviously, she's apologizing, but it seems like there is an underlying excuse in there where she's trying to downplay it by saying, uh, life is difficult, and therefore, I grope and get groped in public at family-friendly events, despite having 
ragged against leftists who do inappropriate things in front of minors. Whether it was the excitement of seeing a much-anticipated production or the natural anxiety of being in a new environment, I genuinely did not recall vaping that evening when I discussed the Unite's events with my campaign team while confirming my enthusiasm for the musical. Right, so here's another another point, another note. If you're going to make an excuse, at least stick with one. In one sentence, she, she gives two different ex excuses. Like she can't decide which one is better, so she just uses them both. Whether it was the excitement of seeing a much-anticipated production or the natural anxiety of being in a new environment. <sighs> anxiety of being in a new environment? You love the spotlight. In this case, you're not even in a, in a spotlight. You're just in a theater. You're just watching a performance. So I'm not sure how that would cause you any more anxiety than, I don't know, giving a congressional speech or something, which you love doing, because again, you love attention. And if anything, it seems like you wanted attention in this case, just not the negative attention you ended up getting. I feel like you didn't really care that people were complaining about you while you were there. If they were tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey, you're being disruptive, and you're like, get lost. I don't want to hear about the natural anxiety of being in a new environment. No, you were you were perfectly comfortable, too comfortable. So much so that it made everyone else uncomfortable. And also, it's not just that. Once again, she's like it might be the excitement of seeing a much anticipated production. Okay. Which is it? Which is it? Were you really that excited about the show that you decided to focus on other things while at the show see I'm just not buying any of this nonsense fake apology as political apologies generally are I genuinely did not recall vaping that evening when I discussed the night's events with my campaign team while confirming my enthusiasm for the musical and for fondling and groping and also fondling and also groping and also vaping regardless of my belief it's clear now that was not accurate, her claim that she hadn't been vaping. It was not my or my campaign's intention to mislead, but we do understand the nature of how this looks. We know we will have to work to earn your trust back, and it may not happen overnight, but we will do it. I mean, you have to because you're campaigning. I deeply am thankful. Let me read that correctly. I'm deeply thankful to those in the 3rd District who have defended me and reached out this week and offered grace and support when I needed it the most. I've learned some humbling lessons these past few days, but I vow moving forward, I will make you proud. So you're deeply thankful to people who have defended you, which they shouldn't do. I'm not saying you're you're like the worst person on earth because I don't believe in manufactured outrage like that. But we got to call our balls and strikes here. Yeah. Speaking of balls. <laughs> okay, so here's a post of mine. I said, I've always found Lauren Bubbert to be overly obnoxious. She seems to only pretend to represent the values of conservatives like me. Just another actor. She should have been on stage there. Alright, so this is a little bit unrelated, but people are tying these things together. Making comparisons. And like I said... I was talking about a sort of similar political issue the other day in regards to uh, Susanna Gibson, I believe. The woman who is running for a political position and turns out that she was also on Chatterbait recording sex scenes with her husband and asking for tips as in money to perform certain acts and things like that. Yeah. Was it with performing? The performance arts seems to be uh, the current thing. But in addition to that, there's this. The Family Values Party, multiple sources. Married Republican Governor of South Dakota, Christy Nolm has been having a years-long intimate relationship with former top Trump aide Republican Corey Lewandowski. 
pictured together and with their respective spouses. I want to talk about this in a separate show because this is something else that blew up. Another bad look for Republicans, for conservatives like me. So I'm not going to defend such actions. They like to defend each other, and sometimes it makes you wonder, is it because they're doing similar things or because they want people to defend them, to defend them if they do similar things? Take Matt Gates for example. He has been defending the both of them. Both, uh, well, I'll say Christy Noem and Lauren Boebert. This here is Hope Hicks, who got involved in this um, unfortunate couple's date, which is a stretch of the imagination, but you know what I mean. Christy Noem with Corey Lewandowski. Christy Noem with her husband. Hope Hicks with Corey Lewandowski. Did I get that right? Oh, wait a second. Wait just a second. Let me correct the record on something. All right, fact-checking myself in real time here. Uh, this woman is not Hope Hicks. Hope Hicks is someone else who was tied to Trump. Who Corey Lewandowski was... Also having an affair with, on and off, apparently. Allegedly. Lewandowski also reportedly engaged in a... Um, on-again, off-again relationship with then-White House Communications Director Hope Hicks. And this right here, I believe, is Corey Lewandowski's... Wife. On the other hand... I'll show you... Hope Hicks. This is Hope Hicks. I think she was a... A model in her younger years. Worked for Donald Trump. Eventually. There you see her on the screen. I'm not going to blow up any of these pictures. You get the point. You get the picture. This show isn't supposed to be about all of them. It's just so complicated. Because they make it complicated. Right? Corey Lewandowski was having multiple affairs. With multiple different women. I'm not saying at the same time. But, you know, between Christy Noem. And, yes, Hope Hicks. Not very faithful to his wife. And neither was Christy Nome to her husband. Again, there they are together. And there are many photos of them together. So, in case you're wondering. There's a lot of articles out about that. You can look it up for yourself. Go down that rabbit hole. I will in a future show, most likely. In regards to Susanna Gibson, if I haven't... If I haven't... uh gotten distracted too much already so many different names to mention but yes because my my previous show was about S Susanna Gibson the the Democrat who literally exposed herself very physically on chatterbait with her husband I mean at least in her case she was with her husband Th though wait part of that whole problem was that she was also involved with other men as well so yeah, why can't people just be faithful? Daily Wire bombshell on Susanna Gibson, the VA dem who talked about forcing unsuspecting hotel staff to take part in her room. And when I say room, I mean P-O-R-N. I don't know if I want to say the word on YouTube. I'll just say room, but it's P-O-R-N. And solicited payments on publicly live-streamed videos so users could watch me pee. Yeah, that's the thing type of thing she was into. Correspondence viewed by the Daily Wire shows the Associated Press was tipped off about the roomographic, if you know what I mean, content on September 4, but chose not to do anything with the story. So in other words, Associated Press caught wind of her performing, her performance on Chatterbait. And uh, despite the fact that she is a political figure running for political position, they did not want to publish the story until it leaked through other means. I'm not sure who exactly leaked it out. Not that it needed to be leaked out. It was public on Chatterbait and elsewhere for the general population to view. 
So this is just a screenshot. Well, not a screenshot, but it's a clip that doesn't actually show anything. Still inappropriate, so hopefully YouTube does not censor my video. Many are now asking which is worse, Republican Lauren Boebert on a date with her boyfriend getting handsy or Democrat Susanna Gibson, a candidate for a Virginia State House seat, going by hot wife experience, quote unquote, on Chatterbait, offering explicit performances for tokens, which was actually against the terms of Chatterbait, apparently. So, White House uh, reporter Simon Atiba, though he may not actually be there anymore. I know there was some controversy around Simon Atiba. He was the reporter who Karine Jean-Pierre would never take questions from. And there were some talks of lawsuits going back and forth, some complaints. And I don't know if he's allowed there anymore. I'm not sure. But this is, this is the question he asked, the comparison he makes about Susanna Gibson and Lauren Boebert. And this is what I had to say about that. I said, why must everything be a comparison, as though it's a competition meant to excuse one person while excoriating the other? I say, scold them each and hold them accountable separately, rather than trying to use them to further partisan politics. First, make the most morally obvious point. And then we can get back to convincing people that our agenda is the most reliable. So what I'm saying there is... We should quit excusing one and excoriating the other in whichever way that's happening. In whatever order. Enough of that. Take responsibility. Accountability. Make the obvious political point. Or shall I say the obvious moral point because morality should come before politics and if someone is acting immorally keep that same energy so here's something else viewer discretion advised remember democrat rhode island state senator tiara mack the same leftists feigning outrage over lauren bobert were totally fine with this i'm not going to actually play the clip because she's like twerking in a handstand on the beach but i did put up an edit of that somewhat censored edit on my Articulate Thinker News Clips channel way back when it happened. I don't know if she's in Congress anymore. But, um, yeah, Melissa Tate tweeted this out. So she's trying to draw a contrast. She's trying to make that comparison in order to excuse Lauren Boebert, in a sense. It's a whataboutism. It's just another whataboutism. And that gets on my nerves. She's saying, hey, look over there. The leftists are fine with this, so us on the right, we should be fine with this. As in Lauren Bobert's actions. <sighs> Enough already. If we can't hold our own accountable, how can we call how can we hold our opposition accountable? Speaking of holding, here is Lauren Bobert's um boy toy getting handsy with her as she gets handsy with him. And Again, hopefully YouTube doesn't take this video down. I'll just leave it there at the bottom of the screen. You can sort of see what's going on. The Dems calling Lauren Boebert a disgrace for this video are the same people cheering on Susanna Gibson. Hypocrisy is an incredible thing, says Eric Spracklin. So I just said in response to him, Right, so be sure that you're not just another hypocrite. There at the bottom of the screen you see it. That's what I had to say. Right? Because if if your whole point is hey, they're hypocrites. This isn't that big of a deal. Because they don't think that's that big of a deal. You're just like them. You're just another hypocrite who is only interested in calling out the opposition. So Matt Gates isn't too different. Here he said, I stand with Governor Christy Nome and Lauren Boebert, they fight for the people and face relentless attacks from the media and the left because they are effective. I remain honored to work with both to advance the America First agenda. Listen, I don't know about you, but if, and this is a giant if because, because this is not what floats my boat, if people close to me, people who worked with me, 
were aware that I was cheating on my wife, for example, I would hope that those people, those friends, those colleagues, would not put out a public statement talking about how they support me. Didn't that just get Ashton Kutcher and, and Miley Kunis in a heap of hot water in regards to, well, their friend, Danny Masterson, who was convicted for our APE? By the way, that's that's the sort of accusation that was made against Matt Gates not too long ago. Women were accusing him of things. Well, I don't know if it was primarily women who were who were accusing him, alleging things against him. But ultimately, those allegations fell apart. He didn't face any consequences. I'm not saying he, he was guilty. I didn't really know whether he was or not. I kind of stayed out of that one because I didn't really trust him in the first place. But at the same time, if there's no evidence of guilt, I'm not going to pretend that someone's guilty. And I just didn't see it. But things like this do make me wonder. Just being honest. Just being honest. So I said, then I definitely don't stand with you. You're just another loudmouth leftist of the right. Who invests in everything you detest. How about standing for truth and decency rather than for an agenda? Because his word at the very end was agenda. That's how he, he summarized his post. You're literally just outing yourself as a morally devoid, politically driven hack. And honestly, I'm going to have a harder time not believing allegations about you moving forward, seeing as how you're so dismissive of such bad behavior when it's near and dear to you. So when people like him have messages such as this, some people might eat it up and they might think, Oh yeah, Lauren Boebert is fighting for us. Governor Christy Nome is fighting for us. Just reading their tags there. Um, and therefore, they can do no wrong. And even if they do wrong, let's just sort of act like they didn't. Let's keep supporting them as though it never happened. Though if people on the left were doing it, we'd, we'd call them out. Okay, just because people on their left are, are a hypocrite does not give you a, a free runway um, to hypocrisy station yourself. Dom Lucre, who has some interesting things to say on X, said, we must re-elect Lauren Boebert. And then he posts the screenshot of her with her cleavage hanging out. So I'm not sure what exactly his point is. He he is someone who 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 loves to expose people. Talk about hypocrisy. Unless this is satire, which I don't think it is. I think he supports her. I could be wrong. But he's all the time exposing people, including the aforementioned Ashton Kutcher. He loves to call them out for their perversion. He'll have these whole threads about, I'm exposing this person. I'm exposing that person. And then he sees a he sees some cleavage, and he's like, we must re-elect Lauren Boebert. Okay, dude, now you just have your mind in the gutter, despite calling out so many people who have their minds in the gutter. I must say, Myth Informed, someone else who I don't usually have an issue with on X, not that my issues with someone are irrelevant. I'm a nobody on, on X on Twitter. But he says, the same people that are demanding an apology from Lauren Boebert for vaping in the theater all supported the prisoner exchange of Merchant of Death for Brittany Griner. Never apologize to these hypocrites. Never? Like, even if you actually do something wrong, never apologize? By the way, you're not supposed to be apologizing to them. You're supposed to be apologizing to, I don't know, pregnant ladies in the crowd? People you're disturbing? Children nearby, those are the people you're supposed to be apologizing to. Not everything has to be about whether or not what you what you say can be utilized by your opposition. Not everything has to be about escaping opposition research. Truth, decency. That should be the agenda. And if you think I'm just throwing around all these random names, now we have another name, Brittany Griner. who I'm not the biggest fan of. And yet, 
It's just another name, another whataboutism, another comparison. Incompetent comparison. Like, hey, look over there. Look at them. All in one statement, you're like, don't look over here, but also look over there. Bridget Gabriel. And these are notable people. I'm uh, showing you posts from. It's just immature. She says, conservatives would never attack a Democrat congresswoman like the left has attacked Lauren Boebert. Why? Because conservatives have class. Do they? Okay. This wouldn't be a story if that were actually true in as broad of a way as you seem to imply. So I said, Lauren Boebert has class? Don't be so one-dimensional. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? Let me go back to just something at the very beginning here. After Lauren Boebert's initial announcement that she had attended the Beetlejuice performance. Someone by the name of Larry said, You look like you enjoyed it, and so did he. I wonder why we should elect you while you have fun. Our nation is burning. Disgrace. Oddly phrased sentence, but it makes sense to me. Someone else says, She is done. She won't be able to get past this one. Nope. And I think that is most likely accurate. As someone who barely won her election. Now, for Donald Trump, it's a little bit different. He's on a different cloud. Maybe not cloud nine, but he's on cloud eight. When something comes out about him, he pushes back against it. He might call it locker room banter or something like that. Locker room talk. And sort of apologize for it. And I'm not saying he should apologize for everything. A lot of people attack him unfairly. But... He has four indictments on him right now, and he seems to be gaining popularity. I don't know if that trend will continue in the general, but for now, seems to be helping him more than hurting him. It's not going to work for Lauren Bubbert. She just doesn't have the clout. She doesn't have the class or the clout. That's her problem. So, yeah, she probably did herself in on this one. But still, people like Jack Posobiec said... Libs never would have thrown AOC out of a theater no matter what she was doing. Another what about ism, another deflection. My response to him Enough with the simple minded what about isms. You're promoting about as much accountability as a leftist would. What a hypocrite. Condemning hypothetical bad behavior in order to excuse the bad behavior that's right in front of you. Pitiful. You're just being the type of person who allows the left to argue that we're no better. Giving them all the reasons we need, or they need. Don't expect them to respect you when you're lowering standards while expecting high regard. Uh, call out your own here. Set the example. I heard a noise. Hold on a second. I had to pause the show to shout to see if my wife is home. Heard a noise, but it's not her. She's hanging out with some, uh, some friends. All right, look at this. Another whataboutism, another deflection. Remember, the same people who think Lauren Boebert's date was too much bring their children to watch Sam Smith live in action. Joey Marino tweets this out. Post this, I should say. No longer Twitter. Keep forgetting. And it's a clip of, you guessed it, Sam Smith having a whale of a time. Very inappropriately so. And yes, we should call that out. But when someone on our own side, who we share an agenda with, does something that's also inappropriate, if not perverted, we shouldn't be like, oh, let me go look. Let me go look for something else to call out. No, call out what's right in front of you. Keep that same energy. Because otherwise, you're just another hypocrite. Just like the people you call hypocrites. Here's another example. The examples are endless. This is that, I, I don't know if it's a minority of Republicans, but group of, of Republicans who are, who are siding, siding with Lauren Boebert on this. Even though she herself has apologized. Sort of. Democrats out here screeching about Lauren Boebert getting her boobs rubbed in a dark theater. 
but take no issue with this. I don't know if I actually want to play this. It's a pride parade of some sort. This dude is basically on his hands and knees on a leash, shirtless. And the reason why I don't want to play it is because these dudes over here in the background are in very scantily clad thongs. And this is a kid right here. Yeah. So... If anything is inappropriate, it's that. But again... Has nothing to do... With the story of the day. Okay, so now these posts are going to be more agreeable for me. Florida Dad said in response to Laverna Spicer. She vaped on a guy's head, gave her boyfriend a handy through the pants, and got mouthy with an usher. She didn't get arrested or fined. Yet because people had the audacity to check notes, notice the story, she's a victim. She behaved poorly, but because she's aligned with Trump, she's absolved from any responsibility. This is exactly how the left maneuvers their favorite sons and daughters through controversy. As long as you parrot the right talking points, anything can be overlooked. Also, please give us more money for our campaigns. Thank you, Florida Dad. So he was responding to this tweet by Laverne Spicer, who said... The leftist media is trying to destroy our America First ally, Lauren Boebert. Oh, how dare they? Send some love to her campaign right now. She stood with us in the speaker's fight. How did that work out? Let's stand with her right now. By the way, that was mostly just a publicity stunt on her part. Little campaign strategy here. Yeah, so send money, in other words. Okay, so something else I, I would tend to, to agree with would be Max Lagos. Wordplay on Mara Lagos. Uh, point. We should primary Bobert and replace her with someone who has the same views but doesn't embarrass us. Agreed. We should replace that Virginia Democrat with a Republican. Agreed. He's talking about uh, Susanna Gibson there. Call me a liberal, he says. So he's responding to this meme. Which goes, liberals, in response to, to Bobert. No! Liberals in response to Susanna Gibson. Yeah. So that may be true, but we as conservatives, as, as Republicans, as people with morals, supposedly, we got to stop trying to flip the script. So I said... It seems to me that part of the reason why liberals are giving conservatives so much of a hard time on this, no surprise, is because conservatives are the ones who are supposed to have the moral values, meaning conservatives are supposed to be held to a higher standard. When liberal politicians like Susanna Gibson get exposed, expose themselves, we call them out, but it doesn't pack much of a punch, since they don't have much of a standard to be held to in the first place. On the other hand, if us morality police turn out to be metaphorical criminals just like them, you better believe they're going to let us know about it since, once again, we're the ones who are supposed to be, you know, conserving values and stuff. Speaking as a mostly conservative here, we need to stop whining about how liberals inevitably aren't being held to the same standard and make sure that we're not missing the mark ourselves. In other words, if we can't even hold our own people accountable, who are we to think we're holding the opposition accountable? So don't get too caught up in your opposition research. So much so that you, you forget about the plank in your own eye. Looking for a speck in everyone else's. As the saying goes. Yeah. From Ann James Ziegler. How does it impact you? Women like Bobert will cost us the White House. Or wait, the House, not the White House. We already lost the White House. <laughs> yeah. House of Representatives. The clown buttery, censoring myself there, of the GOP cost us the Senate, the White House, and soon the House. Next is SCOTUS. You can be both based and fight the culture war and be mature and self-controlled. See DeSantis. Okay, I'm not going to get into a conversation about DeSantis here, though I tend to agree. Better than all these hooligans. Um, but I... 
I don't know if I would go quite as far as Ann James Ziegler and say that we're about to lose SCOTUS or something like that. Seems like that might be what she's saying. But at, with this trajectory, if our own party members continue to turn out to be hooligans, who are we going to be left to, to vote for? I mean, what's the difference going to be between Republicans and Democrats? It's weird how we talk about a one-party system, but then we we suddenly act like there are two parties when our party does something wrong and we want to make excuses for it. So from Alex Rosen, I don't care about party loyalty. I'm not about to defend some 30-year-old spoiled brat acting like a teenager in a movie theater that just had her first beer. Lauren Boebert needs to get a grip. Yeah, she got a grip, but it was on her boyfriend's junk, and that's about it. That's what someone said in the in the comments. I'm almost to the end of the show. I'm at an hour. Didn't intend to go on this long, but I think I've covered a lot of material here. So this is a relevant clip. Lauren Boebert declares that children should never be exposed to sexually explicit subject matter. And there's a bit of a side-by-side, -side, well, not side-by-side, -side, but over and under here. Two clips. Two clips in one. When you make a fool of yourself like this, you're just fueling the fire of the left. I don't think that's what you want. Julian is a mermaid found in DODEA elementary school libraries, describes a boy who wants to become a mermaid. During the book, the boy repeatedly strips down to his underwear. Later, he puts on lipstick and dons a headdress. He is then given a costume jewelry uh, before being seen, but before being taken to the NYC Mermaid Parade where he can freely express himself. Here's the bottom line. Let's stop grooming our children including our military kids. It's gross. It is wrong. I am here to take a stand against it, and I urge my colleagues to pass my amendment to protect our military children from obscene content they should not be exposed to. Mr. Okay, so well said, I suppose, but live up to your own standard. I don't really take issue with anything she said, but... Hey, if you're going to say it, if you're going to talk it, you got to walk it. And if something goes against my values, I'm going to speak out about it. I'm going to speak out against it, whether, whether, whether it's a Republican or Democrat who is in the wrong. I'm not perfect, but uh, I think I'm on the right track here. Here's another clip of Lauren Boebert. More fuel for the fire of leftists. This tweeted out by Eric. Posted by Eric. If Biden and the Democrats made Sunday a rest day for America, you know, to save the planet, how do you think the Republicans would respond? Would they be for it or against it? So forget about that caption. This clip here is, is what's important here. It's supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk. It's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. Okay, that's a political speech at a church. I believe it's at a church. It says Cornerstone Christian Center. I don't know exactly what that's all about. Looks to be in Colorado. But she's talking about separation of church and state. She says she's tired of hearing about the junk, and I get tired of hearing about it sometimes too. But if your point is that the church should be controlling the government, which church? Okay. I am one to realize that this country is built upon Christian values somewhat, and that's why it has maintained as well as it has. And if we do away with those values, it's a problem. However, you sound a little bit like an authoritarian, if you ask me. Not that she did. One more time, I'll play this. Again, this is a woman who is getting preachy, but not really walking the talk. 
church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. That is not how our founding fathers intended it. And I'm tired of this separation of church and state junk. It's not in the Constitution. It was in a stinking letter, and it means nothing like what they say it does. Okay, so maybe maybe you're someone who doesn't have an issue with this sort of behavior in general, whether it's on the left or the right. It's possible that you, you feel that way, that you live your life that way, and that when you see people acting inappropriate or even perverted, you're just one to shrug it off or something like that. Well, I guess my message isn't really for you. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it is for you. Probably is for you. Listen and learn. But I'm I'm just saying for the most part, my my point is in this show, keep that same energy. She says, "I simply fell short of my values." Okay. Leave it at that. Leave it at that and do better. As anyone should who gets caught with your hand in the cookie jar. I might use this as a thumbnail. I'm not sure, though. Either way, i got to wrap this show up now. I have this article pulled up from Colorado Sun. It's a pretty lengthy article. I don't know if it has anything I haven't already covered, but I've covered so much. I'm going to call it quits now, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Keep in touch. Keep in tune. New content is coming soon. Peace.